The Return of the Jesuits to Bombay For 200 years, from 1548 to 1739, Jesuits from Portugal worked in Salset and Bombay, in Thane and Bessin, and thoroughly evangelized these territories. Before being expelled, first by the Marathas in 1739, and then by Pombal, the Portuguese Prime Minister, in 1758. In 1773, the society itself was suppressed for 41 long years. In 1814, Pope Pius VII restored the Jesuits worldwide. The world had drastically changed in between though many did not realize this. Bombay, Bessin, Hane and Salset were no longer ruled by the Catholic Portuguese, but by the English, who were Protestant. Bombay was fast developing as a port city, as a railway junction, and as a commercial metropolis, taking its place as the first city in India. However, its Catholic community was in disarray. Portuguese prelates from Goa, aided by large numbers of the Goan laity, insisted on the old patronage system, the rights of jurisdiction over all Bombay's churches. They were opposed by the Italian Carmelites with their allegiance to the Roman system of propaganda. In the process, the Catholic laity were, quote, torn to pieces through religious dissensions, fallen badly in the social scale, and they were held in contempt everywhere. End of quote. This was the situation when Bishop Anastasius Hartman arrived in Bombay in early 1850. He was a Swiss Capuchin, summarily appointed Vicar Apostolic of Bombay in 1849. Hartman quickly grasped what was needed. As regards the state of Catholic education, he wrote to Rome, no mission has been so badly served as Bombay. He begged the Jesuit general to send him Jesuits to open schools. In 1852, Father General Peter Bex asked the German Jesuit province to consider the Bombay Vicariate as their mission. The very next year, five Jesuits landed in Bombay led by a Dutchman, Father Walter Steins. The well-known Jesuit schools in Bombay date from this time. First, St. Stanislaus in Bandra, an orphanage made over to the society in 1863 as a primary school. St. Mary's Institution in Baikala followed in 1864. It was an orphanage, a boarding school, a novitiate for the Jesuits, a seminary, and also a fledgling college. The flagship Jesuit institution, however, was St. Xavier's on Karnak Road, now Tilakmark. It began both as a school and a college, and continued thus for 30 years until the college moved to its present location on Mahapalika Mark. Those whose vision and energy built these institutions were many. Anastasius Hartman, of course, who sowed the seed, Walter Steins from Holland, first Jesuit of the restored society missioned to Bombay, first superior regular, later bishop, and then Archbishop of Calcutta. Bishop Leo Moiron from Germany, tireless missionary 
skillful administrator, builder of churches, schools, colleges and orphanages, writer and public orator who represented the diocese at the First Vatican Council. What was their singular contribution to the church in Bombay? In a word, education. This word embraces not just the teaching of language and rhetoric, mathematics and the sciences, but also value education. For through their catechisms, devotions, sodalities and popular writings, the Jesuits build up the moral and religious fiber of the community. Their impact on the theological education of the clergy, especially in the years after Vatican II, is a whole chapter by itself. The First World War was a major setback for the German Jesuits, who were interned by the British government and later expelled. So, in 1922, the Jesuit general Ledekowski requested his brethren from Spain to surrender their mission in the Philippines and go to Bombay. It was the Spanish Jesuits who opened the doors to local vocations, who guided the society and the local church during World War II and the independence struggle. The Spanish Jesuits sustained the Bombay Seminary from its early location in Parel to its present form, St. Pius College, Goregao. Even more, the Spanish Jesuits started admitting Indians into the society, thereby fostering a whole generation of Jesuits who came to maturity after Vatican II. Herbert Alfonso, retreat director and interpreter of Ignatian spirituality. George Suarez, scripture exegete and original thinker. Anthony de Mello, spiritual writer with a global outreach, often called a Jesuit Sufi. At the same time, during the 1960s, there was an outreach to rural mission, first in Gujarat, once the mission field of Bombay, and later to the tribal areas of Khandesh. The Maharashtra Prabodhan Seva Mandal, begun by Jokum Baranko, pioneered a whole spectrum of agricultural initiatives. Also, the work with the OBCs and Dalits, begun by the well-known Father Ferrer of Manmad. In 1974, the 32nd General Congregation committed the whole society to the work of faith and justice with a preferential option for the poor. In Bombay City, two projects expressed this option. Sneha Sadan, where foster parents gave affection and security to hundreds of homeless street children, and Reap, a movement for mass literacy in the urban slums which involves hundreds of ordinary women as part-time teachers. And what of today? The world as we know it is in the midst of change, rapid, unpredictable change. Very much like the time when Ignatius lived. Or in the years after the society was restored, the age of republicanism. The main contribution of the Jesuits to history and to this country has been education. Their schools and colleges, whether in the cities or in the villages, bear testimony to this. But the nature of education today has changed, not the need. Can Jesuits today reinvent themselves as teachers, not just to the few, but to the masses? Can they use the new pedagogy of the audio-visual and electronic media to stimulate learning, to make it participative, experiential, contextual? Can Jesuits become more inclusive in their ministries, sharing resources and power with the laity, especially with women? 
a quality the society has always been noted for is its resilience, its ability to bounce back. Often persecuted, many times expelled from countries, once even suppressed, they have always bounced back, as persistent and innovative as ever. Resilience. We need this quality more than ever today.